Hello! I had to turn off my, <laughs> my YouTube. I was jamming to some Tom Wolpat. <laughs> I am Patrick. Welcome to our Monday night, Monday mini medicine card readings. I am Patrick. I will be your shaman, friendly neighborhood shaman of the evening. And we are going to do some readings with these lovely, lovely medicine cards. I just got home from doing readings all day. And I'm tired, but I've always got time and energy for you guys. I love this. I look forward to this every week. This is one of my highlights. So I'm just lighting some sage. So I can smudge, smudge my cards. How is everybody? Um, woof -da. Yeah, like I said, I'm tired. <laughs> it's it's amazing. I I um. I guess it was la not this weekend, like this immediate weekend, yesterday and such. But the weekend before that, I made some decisions about going it alone, actually becoming basically this is my income, no other sources, etc., etc. And it's amazing, as soon as I released all those other fears and um, feelings of dependency, feelings of like, oh my God, how am I gonna make it on my own? Um, I've been busy. The past two weeks, I have been crazy busy. Actually, the last three weeks, and it's just like, holy crap, like all the energy I was expending, trying to kind of hedge my bets and make sure I was covered and, and all of that, like freeing up that energy. It's just, things are exploding. It's been crazy, crazy good, but crazy tiring as well. So anyway, so welcome i'm so glad you're here thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate your presence and your support and if you haven't been here before <coughs> what we do <coughs> i am going to pull three cards and your job is to choose a number or three <laughs> Choose the number between one and three, or a couple of numbers, or all three if you feel like it. And um, I will go through the cards that I pull one at a time, and whichever card corresponds to the number you chose, that is the guidance for the week. That is your guidance for the week. That is the power animal that has volunteer to walk with you through these days and lend you their medicine, lend you their strength, lend you their gifts. So, and um, I'm going to try to do, do this a little different. I, a couple of weeks ago, last week I was just too exhausted. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a little different where I pulled the three cards and I told a little bit, but I didn't go on um, as I want to do, as I am want to do. And um, spend the entire hour talking about just the three cards. But um, 
I'm going to try to touch on each of them a little bit briefer and then do a guided meditation at the end for you to go to this beautiful meadow to meet that animal that volunteered to walk with you this week and to get, <laughs> get quote unquote, from the horse's mouth what it is that they're coming to help you with. Because, <clears throat> you know, that's the one thing I don't like about readings is that everything I say is from my point of view through my filters and so it may not hold 100% true for who I'm reading and and the other thing is that you know I get the messages and the guidance but to you it's just hearsay it's like second hand and so whatever I can do to bring uh, an experiential component to what I do for people and to help lead people to find their own guidance, um, the better off we all are, the better off you are, then it, it's experience, then it's something, it's, it's visceral and there is no one who can take that away from you. Once you experience that, you know, um, and when you do that, I highly, highly recommend if you, if you journal, write the message from your animal guide in your journal or not start a journal or just have a pad of paper someplace that you keep notes on and write down the message that your animal tells you because that's that's one step closer to manifesting into the physical realm you're bringing something that's up here nebulous and mental and you're making a solid you're bringing it into physical reality through writing um and and then you have a record you've got it recorded so that you know over time you still have that experience to draw on, but you might start to kind of wishy-wash about it, like, well, did that really happen? Oh, I don't remember the exact wording they told me. And again, so that starts to kind of erode away at that. So write it down so that you have a record of it. And if you continue to journal it, continue to write down messages from your guides, what your guidance is, um, over time, it becomes a resource for you, like a root, like strength, because you look back on where you've been, what you've been told, all the guidance and stuff, and you can see that thread of truth that runs through it. These things that you were told way back when, and now they're finally true and whatever. So it is good to keep a record of things. So. Okay, let's do this. So choose a number, one, two, three. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm learning to take care of myself. I'm not the best at that. But I am taking at least one, if not two days a week off. Besides the weekend I, that I spend mostly with my fiance. Um, I, I work every other Saturday too, but um, I am finally realizing that in order to do this work, in order to be of service the most, I have to make sure that I am coming from a place of power and rest and that taking care of you guys means taking care of myself. Otherwise, I can't be of service. So thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. All right. Choose your numbers. So, <clears throat> number one, if one is the card you pull, just let me grab a drink of water. Number one, if one is your card, you got mouse. Mouse is about keeping it simple. 
simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, basically embodies that, that phrase of don't sweat the small stuff, it's all small stuff. It's mouse is um, the message of mouse is to stay centered in yourself. Take care of your own little world. Your little world is part of the next person's little world, which is next part of the next person's little world. And together it makes the bigger world. But you don't have to worry about the bigger world. You just need to worry about your bubble of reality. You know, the mouse doesn't worry about the cat that lives two or three yards away, you know, two or three houses away. Like, oh my God, what if that, what if that cat comes and gets me? Mouse is focused on the present. It's about being present here and now. Um, not overthinking things, not allowing yourself to get overwhelmed by what everyone else is doing, what's happening halfway around the globe. Um, it's good to be informed about those things, but you don't need to be inundated by those things. Um, you know, I know it's kind of become a kind of a new age cliche now, but you really are the creator of your reality. Um, the present is your point of power. Right here, right now, right here, right now, as you're watching this, as you're listening to this, everything you need is within you. There is nothing you need from the bigger world right now. And when you do need something, you know how to find it, you know how to get it, go to the store to get food, whatever. Just is one step at a time. Um, we so overcomplicate our lives and we get ourselves pulled in so many different directions, right? Um, it's time to just, okay, take everybody else out of the equation. When you have decisions to make, when you have choices to make, make them from your heart and your heart alone by what your heart feels. <laughs> we start worrying about how it's gonna affect this person and how this other person might react. Um, are we being fair to these two people or whatever? That's coming from the head. That's trying to, to logistically, logically figure things out, right? But we're trying to move into a more heart-centered world, a more heart-centered society. And the cool thing about that is our hearts are all connected. They're all part of the same energy. Our hearts are what connect us to Creator. Um, so when you're listening to your heart, when you're making choices from your heart, you're basically following the, following the directions of the conductor, of this whole orchestra of hearts out here doing their different things. If everyone paid attention to their heart, they would be tuning into the same conductor. And so that's when we can move into harmony and follow the conductor telling us which parts to play, when to play them, how fast to play them, all of those things. You know, the trombones don't sit there and worry about what the piccolo is doing, right? If the trombone is waiting for the piccolo before the trombone goes, then it's going to be late, it's going to be messy, it's going to be out of harmony, right? So forget about the piccolo, forget about everyone else. I know that sounds callous or selfish, but when you trust that it's our hearts that connect us all, it's a non-zero sum equation, right? It's not an X equals Y 
so that when x x minus 1 equals y plus 1, you don't have to lose on one side to gain on the other side. It's a non-zero sum. It doesn't have to equal zero. When you do better, everyone does better. When we all do better, we all do better, right? And so when you're working toward your betterment, when it's coming from the heart, when it's coming from the idea of connection, compassion, love, being the greatest that you can be, it's not selfish because the better you are, the better everyone that you connect with. All those other little reality bubbles that touch your reality bubble are lifted by your upliftment. Something cannot be to your betterment and be to the detriment of someone else, okay? We're all connected. When you raise your frequency, you raise the frequency of the entire collective, okay? And when you take care of yourself, um, like I, I had a client the other day that was talking about um, living with her mother and it's like there's a bathroom upstairs and she's always running up stairs to make sure that that bathroom is clean because she knows everybody wants a clean bathroom and then when it comes down to her bathroom she doesn't really take care of it but it's like but if you made sure your bathroom was clean you know how that makes you feel it makes you feel more on solid ground your thoughts and everything is a little more organized um, then you're moving from a place of power you have that extra energy in order to help others sort out their things. Does that make sense? Um, so take care of yourself. You are your first priority. And it's not selfish. You don't... Sacrificing yourself for the sake of someone else is... It, it doesn't work that way. Um, take care of yourself. It's like the better you take care of yourself, the more in alignment you can become with spirit, with creator, then the more light and love just naturally spills out of you. And that spillover goes to the people in your life and raises them up. And so by being this fountain, this spring of love and light bubbling over, you're serving everybody else. You know, you can't, like Abraham Hicks says, you can't get poor enough to help those who are impoverished. You can't get sick enough to help those who are ill. You can only help from a place of power, okay? All right, number two. If two is your card, you got the bear. Um, great. <laughs> now I have, you probably, I don't know anyone on here who's going to remember this show, but back in the 80s there was a show called BJ and the Bear. I got that song going through my head now. Hey there, where are you going? Not exactly knowing. Who says you have to call just one place home? It was about a trucker with a chimp whose name was Bear. Anyway, so Bear. That kind of shows how tired I am because I'm just kind of punch drunk. Anyway, Bear. Um, bear is about um, introspection. When Bear pops up, it's time to spend some quiet time go into the darkness. The darkness is the womb. When Bear goes into the cave, it's the womb of the Earth Mother. She's going in there to be reborn in the spring. And so it's time for quiet. It's time for stillness. It's time for introspection, to look inside, to daydream. It's, it's time to like still the world 
you know, move out of the chaos and all of that of the world and pull in and just be with yourself. Um, Bear, it's kind of funny because it's like Bear goes into the womb of the Earth Mother when Bear herself is um, basically the original Great Mother Goddess. And she was the first one ever worshipped by humans. And it's evidenced by the oldest uh, human tombs all have bear skeletons or bear skulls in them because bear um, virtually, in, in, a, in essence, died, went into the ground, died, and then was reborn again in the spring, like came back to life. So she was the commander of life and death. And so they would have bear in the in the tombs to help guide the people to the afterlife because she knew life and death and so she would be the one that they that she is the first deity they worshiped she was the great mother um and so it's time to mother yourself it's time to at least I, mean, I don't like to put time limits on it, but um, kind of along with number one with the mouse, it's time to prioritize your time, your self time, your downtime. Um, like even on your daily schedule, like X out an hour for yourself to just sit read, meditate, ponder life, whatever it is, but draw back from the cacophony of the world, draw back from the crowds and just experience your own self, your own energy without the influence of anyone else, anyone else's energy, anyone else's opinion, so that you can get a sense of your baseline energy and that is so important especially for empaths because we get so pushed and pulled and in whirlwinds by other people's energies if we don't know the the uh, um, signature frequency of our own energy we're just going to get caught more and more in those whirlwinds but when we have that signature frequency, we, we know what that feels like. Then when a different feeling comes in, a different emotion or whatever comes into our field, we can recognize it as other. It's like, oh, that's not mine. I'm going to put it down now. You know, we don't have to carry everybody's stuff. And so bear is the opportunity to go into the dark, to feel who you are. I keep picturing like those sensory depri deprivation tanks. I've never gotten the chance to, use, to do one of those, but I, I want to do one of those soon. Um, but it's like, so find a space, find your own personal womb. Maybe it's a, a corner of the house, maybe it's your own room, maybe it's out in a park someplace with a special tree, some place that you can retreat where it's just you and goddess, just you and creator. And see what it feels like to just be you. Feel what it feels like to just be and not to do. I just saw a couple of orbs going zippity zippity. Cool, hi guys. Um, yeah, so, which feeds into what I said about Maus as far as taking everyone else out of the equation, <clears throat> when you know who you are and you recognize what's other people's stuff, then you can make better 
decisions, you can act better coming from that place of solid being. You're a, you're a human being, not a human doing. There is value in stillness. There is value in napping. There is value in just sitting and spacing out. You don't have to be accomplishing anything. You don't have to earn your right to be here on this planet. The fact that you are proves that you deserve to be here. Um, you're not here. You're you're not an indentured servant. You don't have to pay your way. You don't owe it to anyone to justify your existence. You are, and that's enough. And you are enough, okay? So take care of yourself. Get to know yourself. You know, that whole become your own best friend. Treat yourself like you treat your best friend instead of being your best your worst critic you know short changing yourself for the benefit of others start treating yourself like you're your best friend because you are you are the only one who's going to be with you every step of the way in this life and beyond you are your first priority treat yourself that way you know i had number of months ago um i was doing ceremony and i was asking my guy am i okay am i doing okay am i doing the right thing i want to make sure i'm not doing any damage i want to make sure i'm not doing any harm am i doing okay and my guides said they basically said you're the only one here who is judging you we are all pleased with who you are with what you're doing we never judge you you have never done anything wrong in our eyes. We take you from where you are and we try to help you get to where you want to go. That's all they care about. And if you don't make it on the route they suggest, they help bring you back like a giant GPS rerouting, you know. Um, but your guides don't judge you. The divine does not judge you. There's not... Like, I love that from um, Donald, blah, 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 what's his name, from The Secret, when he talks about, you know, God isn't up there with a, a dry erase board going, okay, you, number one, you didn't do this, number two, you were supposed to do this by this time. No, you're in the right place at the right time. You have never done anything wrong. There is nothing wrong with you. We are the only ones who judge ourselves. We're the only ones who criticize ourselves. We are the only ones who hold ourselves back from embracing our greatness. So allow yourself to touch into that, to feel that greatness, what it feels like just to be, okay? All right. Number three, trying to make sure we have time for our guided meditation. If three was your card, <clears throat> got Jaguar. <coughs> it's funny how all three cards kind of fit together. Jaguar, number three, is about integrity. Um, and you can't live in integrity if you don't know who you are right if you can't hear your own heartbeat there's no way you can walk to your own drumbeat right you have to know yourself in order to have integrity otherwise you're just flopping around you know all over the place hither and yon and who knows who you are right so Jaguar is about being that king or queen of your reality, being the apex predator, knowing who you are and knowing what you want. You know, Jaguar sees what she wants, she hunts, she gets, right? 
there's no per she doesn't have to ask permission she doesn't have to justify herself she doesn't have to explain herself to anybody she is her own authority and it's her heart that makes her so again the heart which connects us to creator which connects everyone to creator so when you live from your heart you are living for the highest good of everyone on earth and so when you live with your heart as your authority, you're walking in integrity because there's no distractions. There's no <clears throat> trying to figure out. There's no bumbling around. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, cats are like, well, most cats <laughs> are like I've heard them referred to as, as art in motion. They are so graceful. They, they flow. They're like, <laughs> they have two states, solid and liquid. And, um, but everything they do is with this grace and, and the sensuality, you know, the, the, the hair, every hair on a cat's body is a whisker. And so they are that sensitive to their environment. And so they basically, as they're moving through their world, they are in essence making love to their environment. They are well aware of the temperatures, of the air flowing past their skin, of all the different things in the air, of the brush of the trees, leaves brushing by them, the feel of the earth beneath their pads they live making love to the earth so it's like fall in love with your life fall in love with your sensations um, what else be be the king or queen of your reality. Again, kind of with what I was saying earlier, you know, Jaguar is the queen of her reality, king, queen of, or king of his or her world, but her world is a circle. It's the circle of life, right? She might be up here on the circle, but everything that happens to her benefits everyone else around that circle if she's doing well the rest of the circle thrives if you think about the lion king the movie the lion king you know when mufasa was the king everybody thrived it doesn't mean there wasn't you know death and different things that we tend not to pay attention to you know life and death and um, all of that kind of thing, but that's just part of life. And then when Scar took over as king, the whole kingdom suffered because he was not healthy. He was not a well lion. He was sick mentally, physically, emotionally. He wanted power rather than claiming the power that he already had. And, he, and so he basically bled the kingdom dry trying to get power from others, right? You don't need that. You have all the power you need within you. And by stepping into that power and being the strong ruler, you know, he who rules least rules best from the Tao Te Ching. It's like by just being yourself, seeing your own well-being, everything around you thrives. So be in your integrity. Um, and be, don't, how do I put this? We have this thing about predators. We, we admire them like jaguars, like, oh my God, what a beautiful cat. And we wanna be like jaguar. We wanna be that, that smooth and, and all of that. But we also do, we don't want to pay attention to the fact that she kills in order to survive, right? But she takes only what she needs. 
she tends to kill the weaker or the sick or elderly, which ultimately um, adds to the well-being of the herds or the families, the entire thing. And so it's like Artemis, Artemis, the hunter god, huntress, goddess. Um, not only is she the goddess of midwifery, she is the goddess whose arrow determines who lives and who dies. She, again, there's this whole life and death thing with bear and with jaguar, but don't be afraid to, I wanna put this in the best verbiage, right? Um, don't be afraid to hunt down and release from your reality what no longer serves. If there is something in your environment that is not for your highest good, then that needs to die for you to thrive. Does that make sense? I am, um, you know, it's the predators, like when they introduced the wolves back to, to Yellowstone, and it was the predators who brought the health back to the environment because without the predators, all the vegetation was um, overgrazed. The herds were walking everywhere. Um, not only did the, were the trees dying because they had no leaves, and so their roots weren't strong enough to hold the banks of the river, they were also trampling down all the banks because they were going down to the river just willy-nilly wherever they were rather than having specific places. And so the entire environment was unhealthy and the herds were overpopulated. There was sickness running through. Um, the entire herds were suffering because of the lack of predators. And once the wolves were introduced and started taking out the weak, the, the, the sick, the young, whatever, the not only did the herbs, the herds rebound, the herbs too, the herds rebounded because they didn't have as much disease going through. It was the strongest, fastest ones that were surviving. And so they were propagating the strongest, fastest genes. And they were only eating in certain areas. And they were only going down to the rivers in certain areas because other areas were too vulnerable to the predators. And so just the presence of the predator added to the health of the entire shebang, okay? So don't be afraid to be the predator, to be, be the one who decides, no, you do not belong here. Um, it's funny, I was just having this conversation in a class the other night. Um, there was one point in my apartment where it was getting kind of over overpopulated by flies. I don't know where they came from. I cleaned out the garbage disposal. I took out all the garbage. I cleaned everything up and they were still here just everywhere. And I, I never could figure out where they were coming from. And I hate to kill things. I do not, I literally will not hurt a fly. You know, I won't even swat a mosquito if I can help it. And so I had to do, go for my guidance. I'm like, okay, guys, this is my house. I need you to move. This isn't healthy. This isn't good for me. Could you please go somewhere else? You know, I'm trying to bargain with them, trying to connect with the God of the flies, the Lord of the flies. Um, and none of that was helping. And so I went to my own guys. I'm like, what do I do? And they were like, you have to step up and be, be the ruler of your domain. And so I actually went out and bought a fly swatter and I did ceremony. I blessed the, sw the fly swatter. I smudged it. I blessed it. I tied some ribbons on it with prayers for the highest good of the souls of all of these beings that I was going to shuffle onto the next karmic wheel. And then I went and I started swatting them. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But 
it was unhealthy to have them there. They did not belong here in my house. And so I had to take, take the horse by the reins. I had to step up, be the leader, be the one who determined what belongs and what doesn't belong. And so with every SWAT, I, I prayed, I thanked them for their service, I thanked them for their lesson, I released their spirit off to the next world and moved on. And I still think back in that, if that happened again, I don't know if I'd be able to do it again. Well, I would, but it would be really, really difficult. But I had to do that. I had to become the predator. I had to become the apex predator who was seeing to the health of my environment, right? So don't be afraid to step into your power. You were meant for greatness. You are royalty, okay? All right, so I think we still have time for the, for the guided meditation. So just to remind you, if one was your card, you got mouse. If number two was your card, you got bear. If number three was your card, you got Jaguar, okay? So I am going to just do a guided meditation. I'm gonna just softly beat my drum to kind of help the rhythm, um, help kind of entrain your brain. And we are going to go to a beautiful meadow where you're going to meet the animal that agreed to be your guide this week. And you're going to ask them yourself, what is their message? What is their guidance? So that is just not hearsay from what I'm telling you. You're going to get it right from their mouth and it'll be an experiential knowing on your part so that no one can, can tell you otherwise, okay? All right, so let's do this. So go ahead and close your eyes. breath. Hold it for a moment. Release it. Take another deep breath. Hold it. Let it go. Now I want you to open your third eye as if it were another eye, just like your other two. yourself at the edge of a forest that encircles this beautiful vast meadow. There's tall grasses watching the wind create the waves and these beautiful grasses, the sound of the insects buzzing nearby. And in the middle of the meadow you spot this large flat stone that is just inviting you over. So go ahead, walk toward the stone, feel the grass uh, brushing your hands, hear it shuffling against your legs, hear the buzz of the insects, calls of the birds and the trees behind you. And when you finally get to that stone, go ahead and crawl up onto that flat surface and feel the warmth of the sun, the, war the sun warmed stone underneath you. And feel the warmth of the sun on your face. Feel the coolness of the breeze playing with your hair against your skin. Take a deep breath again. <sighs> Coming totally present upon this stone. Now we're going to invite your animal guide for this week, whoever it was that came up in the cards. Invite them. They might come from the trees. They might come just out of the grasses. 
but invite them into this holy, sacred space where you are safe. When they arrive, greet them in whatever way feels good to you. Scratch them be behind the ears, head bonk them, whatever feels right. Thank them for coming to be your companion this week. And now I'm going to be quiet for a minute or two. Well, you ask them what is their message for you specifically and what is the guidance that they came here this week to help you with. That was helpful. I hope you got something. Even if you didn't, pay attention in the next day or two. They sometimes, if they don't give you an answer in the meditation itself, you might receive something in a dream. You might hear someone talking, and they'll be exactly the message you needed. Um, just know whether you can feel them or talk to them or not, they are there with you. This is not just some abstract, archetype, symbolic something or other. 
<clears throat> these are real spirits. These are real animal spirits that come to help you. And they are there to help you and guide you, to lend you their strength, to lend you their skills, to navigate whatever you are facing in this week. So don't underestimate what and how they can help you, okay? And if you need to go back, re-listen to this, to, to the guided meditation, and if you forget what they said, or you just want some more guidance later, or something else new happens, you can always consult them. Your spirit guides never get angry at you. Your spirit guides will never, uh, they're just, they, like I said, or I think I said earlier, about they don't have an agenda. They are helping you get from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. That is their only agenda. So they're not about, you should have been here earlier, you should have known this by now. None of that. They are just to take you from where you are and to help you get where you're going, okay? And so they don't mind <laughs> they don't mind being asked things over and over and over. Um, they're not going to get angry. They don't get impatient. They may roll their eyes. It's really something to see a reindeer roll his eyes at you, but it's always good natured. Okay. So don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know what to do here. Please, whoever it is, come and help me. Okay. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah. And I'm like, I felt a little, it took me a little bit to, to, to find my groove with the drumming. I hope that wasn't distracting for you. Um, and I hope that is helpful and feel free to rewatch that. Um, if you have encounters with other animals along the way, if you see certain animals, or a, a certain animal pops up on the internet that you never heard of before, feel free to use that, that guided meditation to connect with that animal and find out why they showed up, what is it they represent, what is their message, and what have they come to help you with. Because there are no accidents. Everything is in your life for a reason, for a purpose. And the better we get at decoding that, the better off we are, right? So, anyway, oofda, I think that is it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're new, welcome, thank you for joining us. I hope you join us again. And if you did enjoy that, um, and you'd like to experience uh, a complete reading all for yourself check out my website we can arrange an appointment either in person or zoom or whatever do a reading where the messages are all directed straight for you for what you need to know what you need to do next whatever so my website is perchingwolfstudios.net and you can check out the other uh, shamanic services that I offer kind of just can't stop moving my hands. Um, Perchingwolfstudios.net. You can get a hold of me through that. You can message me through Facebook. Um, I will share this to my Facebook page and I will also upload it to my Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe to that so you don't miss any videos. Um, and Follow me on Facebook and um, what else? Oh, if you are interested in shamanism, if anything I say kind of piques your curiosity and you'd like to know what that shaman stuff is all about, um, on Friday, July 30th from 2 to 5, I'm going to be doing a Zoom class on, it's an introduction to shamanic journeying. And so it's going to be uh, kind of a class about the origins of shamanism, the history of shamanism, what it is, what it's not, kind of the cosmology of shamanism, how a shaman sees the cosmos, 
And at, besides all of that background and information, in the second part of the class, we will be doing an actual shamanic journey. I will teach you the technique that shamans have used for over 100,000 years to connect to their spirit guides. And you will meet your own power animal spirit guide. Um, and from that point on, once you know how to journey, once you have your foot in the door with a spirit guide, it's like the world is yours. It's like every possible reality becomes possible. Um, so you can, you can uh, register for that on my website again, perchingwellstudios.net, or you can email me or through here. Um, let me know. Um, it's going to be a good class. It's a class that literally changed my life. When I, when I started on the shamanic path and I took, took my first shamanic journey class, which is basically what this class is, it was like the world opened, everything changed. So if you feel pulled to the shamanic path, you know, not everybody is called to be a shaman per se, but everybody can walk a shamanic path. Everybody can use the shamanic techniques for direct revelation from their guides, okay? And shamanism is the oldest known spiritual practice. It goes back at least 100,000 years, and it is cross-cultural, cross-global. Every culture on the planet has shamanism at its roots. Every spiritual practice has shamanism at its roots. So shamanism is the birthright of every person on the planet today. Okay, so check that out if you can make that. Otherwise, if you have questions, you can set up a session to come and see me. We can do a reading. We can talk about shamanism. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh, for shamanic students. And we can go that route if that's something that calls to you. Just putting it out there. So let me know how I can serve you. My job is to support and empower you. So um, that is my joy. That is my honor. And I look forward to it. So thank you again so much for joining me. Um, thank you for your support. Feel free to share this video far and wide. Um, invite your friends to come in every Monday. And I think that is it. So again, I hope to see you soon. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so thank you again for joining me. I, until I see you next time, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. Okay. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Connect to those animal guides. Let them do their work. Let them help you. Okay, so have a wonderful week. I will see you soon. Um, go shining. Bye.